Hey guys, welcome to another Vegan Cooking Master video. Today, as you can see, I'm sharing something more casual, what I eat in a day. A lot of people, they ask me, what do you eat in a day? And some of them even think that I eat like, I don't know, like fancy stuff and dressings and super beautiful plate, everything. When the reality is that I actually eat on the go a lot of the times or at work and probably just have dinner and sometimes breakfast here at home. So today is my day off and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to share with them the truth, you know, behind the scenes. We're so used to in Instagram we or everywhere in social media, we always see all the people, the editing, the perfect food. And that discourages some people to actually cook. And I don't want you to be discouraged to eat more plant-based or more vegetables into your diet. I want you to be like, oh, that was easy what he made for lunch. And I'm going to show you the real time, what I take. A lot of people also think 10 minute ideas, like what are you going to cook in 10 minutes? Come on, you take the pants and everything, that's five. <laughs> you know, like they are not counting everything. So, you know, I just want to be just a little bit more real in this video today. So let's get started with my day. Okay, so now it's 1 p.m., but I already did a lot of things. I mean, not a lot, but I, I did things. Um, <laughs> I went to the gym. First thing I did when I woke up, I had lemon water basically it's just half a lemon or one lemon depending on how i feel a pinch of himalayan salt and water a whole glass that helps me to start going my system you know to clean it before i used to do also cellar use 15 minutes after but i haven't done it in months because my uncle has my user uncle if you're watching this give me my user back anyway then after that i went to the gym and now it's 1 p.m it got too late because i was in some calls but I usually around 11.30, I'm already here, I already meditated after I woke up. So now I'm having my peak defense. These are some vitamins that I've been testing for the past month uh, from Life Force. The reason I'm testing Life Force is because two months ago, I did my blood work. Basically it's a 40 biomarkers and guess what? I actually scored pretty high. I wasn't expecting it, but like good thing, you know, like I'm gonna share the results if you want. I can share with you, you know, my results. And if you're curious to see what a vegan plant-based, because I've been plant-based for more than six years already, more than six years. And I don't look that bad, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I like to think that to myself. So let's get the breakfast done. For the breakfast, I'm gonna have a high protein smoothie because now I'm very into getting enough protein into my system because I love doing exercise and I know, understand that protein is very good for muscle growing, muscle repair, but also all your body functions with protein. So I didn't know that, but now I'm like, you know what, actually it is important that I count the proteins that I eat. So in my smoothie, I'm gonna have around 40 grams of protein and then I'm gonna have also some pancakes for breakfast that's gonna be like kind of my carbohydrates and fats so let's get cooking i usually use spell flour but now i don't have so i'm gonna use a little bit of all-purpose flour i try to use high quality organic and also that is like blend with or grounded with the whole grain most of the time so this is my ratio like the only thing that i measure is this and the baking powder but the rest is gonna be by eye so I like my pancakes to have a variety of seeds, so I just do it by eye. I'm like, like, okay, that looks good, you know? But that's like a tablespoon or like a tablespoon and a half. I do it by eye because I already know more or less the amounts. I have it kind of like in my hands already. You know, I have done it many, many times. These are some mulberries that I'm just adding the same. I have some seeds, you know, when I have flax seeds, I add flax seeds. Uh, I have some pumpkin seeds as well. These are sprouted, so I'm also gonna add some. Why? Because I don't want them just flour pancakes, right? Basically, I already have the dry here, except for the baking powder. For the baking powder, this is the secret added at the end, okay? So we're gonna start adding the wet stuff. One thing that I love, 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 love adding into the pancakes that makes a huge difference is a banana. This banana is super long, so, wow. Um, I'm actually gonna just add this one regular banana so you can mash it before in the bowl I just don't want to bring another bowl and then mash it on the here this helps to bind it right and the flax is also helps to bind it but that's not the purpose the reason I'm adding the chia seeds 
is because I want the omegas that is in it. Also just to make more nutritious my pancake. This is extra virgin olive oil. So I add about one tablespoon to one tablespoon and a half. When I don't have olive oil, sometimes I add coconut oil as well. Water. I'm gonna start with one cup. I always start with one cup, like by eye, right? Because I put a one cup of flour. Usually that's kind of like the ratio to make uh, the butter thick. And look, uh -huh -huh. don't mix it too much. That's it, just mix a little bit. And that's a pretty good consistency. The thing is, with the chia seeds, if a lot of time passes, they're gonna start absorbing water. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more because I know the chia seeds are a little bit comelonas, you know, they love to drink water. And then at the end, right before, like we're gonna turn on the pan right now. And this is the only thing that I measure, one tablespoon of baking powder. Because if you put too much baking powder, it's going to taste like baking powder and that's horrible taste. Add it at the end. Why? Because we want it to start acting now, not before, and then all the bubbles disappear. Because this is what makes them fluffy. That's the coconut sugar that I forgot. Just mix gently. And then let's go to the pan. What I do next is I always use a large spoon. And look, I don't manipulate the mix a lot because there are already bubbles there. So gently, then we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil or coconut oil. And then look, boom. Just let it flow, let it flow to the side. Look, all those bubbles, we want to preserve them. Then you can do like a little bit, if you want it bigger, you can just push it to the side, just a little bit, but don't manipulate it a lot. I like to use the cast iron because it gives that kind of like toasty flavor, like, oh my God. Apart from that transfers the heat super well, it's just the flavor in the pancake is way different. And even the crust that it's gonna get is gonna be completely different. So make sure it's medium, to medium high flame. It's gonna be done in seconds. And that's it. That's it. These are my pancakes. Now let's enjoy them. Mm. Let's do my smoothie. This is my go-to smoothie in the mornings. Almost all the time I vary the fruit or something. So I have like three quarters of a cup or a cup of like uh, blueberries, wild blueberries, a little bit of a spirulina. I don't calculate it. I just do probably half a teaspoon. Sometimes I add a little bit more. It depends, you know, I just buy it. This is beet powder. This is good for circulation, for the blood circulation. So I add this and also there are studies that show that it's really good for the recovery, for give you more stamina when you do exercise. This is my creatine powder. I do one scoop that is five grams. And there are also studies that show that five grams every day, that's really good for, it's not only for muscle, but creatine is also for the nails, for the hair. It's for a lot of uh, uh, things in your body. And this is my protein. This is unsweetened protein that I use. It's almost over, <laughs> that's why I need to reach into it. Each scoop is 20 grams of protein. So as I mentioned, I'm getting 40 here. So I want the other 20. Beautiful. Sometimes I add like an extra 10 and I just like, up, five more. And that's it. I'm just gonna blend everything. It doesn't have any sugar. It doesn't have anything else. And basically this is gonna accompany my delicious pancakes. So if I'm not having pancakes, what I do is I add less water, way less, like I'm basically doing a smoothie bowl. So I add less water, just a tiny bit, more fruit, one banana and a little bit more blueberries, or if I have cherries or raspberries frozen, I add them and I add, add the protein in here and that's my whole breakfast. I just add some granola, nut butter sometimes, probably not because now I'm adding already granola, the granola of the nuts, the fats, cacao nibs, cacao nibs or chocolate chips, and probably a little bit more banana on top. But that's it. The spirulina does give us a, a taste kind of like weird, but you get used to it with time. You get used to it. Spirulina is super good for you. I'm more as a vegan. So I try to drink it as much as I can. 
not all the time I do spirulina or I am in the mood for spirulina. So sometimes I just really omit it and I'm like, oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> and I just put, I don't know, some spices or something, some cinnamon or some cardamom. And that's it. Simple. Okay guys, so we're gonna make lunch. It's 4.30 and I'm not still like that hungry. So I'm gonna make lunch because Ari wants to eat. And also, I don't know, in an hour probably I will have lunch. So first thing that I do, go and check the fridge. I'm a little bit ashamed of showing you the fridge because it's kind of a mess. But the point is, at the top we keep the things that are cooked. Grains, uh, roasted vegetables, pancakes. In the middle section we have greens. And here we have onions in one of these drawers, bottom fruits, and the other one more vegetables. So what I do is I always check, okay, let me see what greens I have already cooked. In this case, we have quinoa, so I can make something with quinoa. I have a little bit of lentils. Sometimes what I do is I complement each other. I use a little bit of the lentils that I have left over with the quinoa, and I just make a little bit of vegetables and a little more protein. So that's an option that I have right now. These two, we just do some vegetables sauteed or in the pan or grill, something simple. I have greens here. Usually Ari loves greens. So we have kale, we have lettuce, we have a little broccoli, cauliflower. What I'm thinking right now, I have some radicchio. I love radicchio, by the way. So look, I'm gonna use some radicchio. I also do it by eye. Radicchio is kind of like my body's feeling it. I'm feeling it. I saw some cauliflower. I'm feeling it too. I want the protein. Two packages of tempeh. So do you know that one of these is 58 grams? So you need to eat one of these or I should need to need one of those for me to kind of like get around the protein that I want. Even three quarters is a good portion. Some Brussels sprouts. I'm thinking saute these, cut it very finely, chop these finely, saute it with garlic, then the tempeh in another pan. And let's see what else we have. Scallions and we have lots of cucumber so let's make a little bit fresh with the cucumber for the side i know it looks kind of complicated but it's not going to be complicated radish red onion garlic 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 some lettuce boom put this back in okay let's start all right so the first thing we're going to do is cut our vegetables that we're going to cook i like to first start with the things that are going to be cooked because in this case, we're gonna do tempeh with cauliflower and Brussels, and a little small salad with cucumber, uh, radishes, and radicchio. So the salad can be done at the end while the other vegetables are getting cooked. We we'll start now with the things that we're gonna cook that are gonna go in the pan. We're gonna cut our cauliflower thinly, as thinly as you can, because remember, if it's thin, it's gonna cook fast, and that's what we want. This is like one cup, so I need like two cups, right? It's gonna reduce. And in my mind, obviously I'm not measuring and I never measure, I always do it by eye. But now I know more or less, you know, like a cup of a vegetable for this, since it's one of the main vegetables, is gonna be for Ari and one cup for me. So I make it two cups. All our Brussels are already cleaned and now we're gonna cut them thin too. And all of these are gonna go in the same container as the cauliflower. The reason being is because the cooking time is gonna be the same. Now I'm gonna cut the tempeh and I wanna cut it thinly, very thinly, because that is gonna give it another texture when you eat it. So in this plate, I want it to be like everything sauteed thinly. I don't want big chunks of tempeh. Look, you see, your mouth is gonna be completely different. Fast, 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 fast. fast. Faster, 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 faster. Now watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> watch your fingers, don't go that fast. Let's see some of the tempeh. We're gonna use cumin. You see, it's as much as you, you like. And I start doing it by eye. You know, you're gonna find yourself more comfortable in the future. So this is ají amarillo. So this is powder. This is a Peruvian chili. Then we're gonna add some salt, you know. I like to do it by layers one. Two layers, more or less. Avocado oil, because we're gonna use high heat. This is like two tablespoons, probably. Then mix it with like this. In the meantime, I'm gonna turn 
my heat on, my cast iron. I want to pan the transfer the heat properly. That's it. Okay, so now let's put our tempe. Our cast iron is hot. You can hear the sizzling. Don't overcrowd it. You know, we're going to have time while we cut and while we add other things. So we're going to do it in two steps. Here is one. And then the rest is here. It's medium, medium flame. Boom, that's it. You're gonna use probably the spatula or something. While the temp is cooking, we're gonna add avocado oil into the brussels and the cauliflower. We're gonna season with oregano. So you wanna put plenty of, of oregano and then just use your hands and just mash it. Mmm, smells so good. Some salt, remember? I was gonna say recuerda in Spanish. <laughs> Just become more intuitive, you know? When you start using your hands, you're already using a lot of your senses, you know? And it's just, we're so smart. We're so connected to the source. We're divine beings. So just, just be one with that. Let's cook it. This, I just turned it on a few seconds ago. And it has the same. Don't crowd the pan, big mistake. A lot of people think it's faster, but it's slower, baby. So just spread it there. That's it. While that is happening, we're gonna cut some garlic and also some onion, some red onion that we're gonna use after the tempeh sear. That's the reason we're not adding it early because if not, it's gonna get burned. And a lot of people cannot sear their tempeh or their tofu because they are this too early and then it start burning and they're like, oh my God, this done, just take it out. Yeah, and it doesn't have any flavor. Just gonna make it super easy. Cut the rounds, boom. And then we're just gonna cut here and half. We want chunks. Actually, we're not gonna use this. Change my mind. And now this is done. You can see you, we have color here. We have color here, here. It doesn't have to be all everywhere. So we're just gonna take it out. Then add the rest. Now we check our cauliflower and the cauliflower, look, is what? It's done. Why? This is still a little bit hard, but we don't want it too soft. We want it a little bit chewy. That's it, it needs to be crunchy. Even the brussels, they're still green. They are not gray. They're not super dark. You know, you can definitely give them some more color, but they're great like that. We're gonna put them in a bowl and then we repeat the same process. Okay, let's start cutting our uh, cucumbers for our salad that is going to accompany that tempeh. Remove the top, the bottom, and I like to just cut it like this, rolling cut. Just want a little bit of like, you know, a chunk. So you just keep rolling it, rolling it, rolling it. We have a little bit of radicchio. Remove the heart. And very simple, remember, this is super bitter. I love it, but not everyone loves it. So if you're adding it in your family, just add a little bit at a time. I like to cut it thinly sometimes, or big chunks. If it's for me, I can do big chunks. But sometimes even Ari doesn't like it a lot. So like, I just cut it like this amount. You see, that's perfect for a salad. Let's cut our beautiful, look at this gorgeousness of green radish. We're gonna cut it thinly, add it to the salad. This is gonna add texture. And literally, this is what I do. You know, you don't have to cut a lot or if even all of it, that's it. Just a little bit would make the difference. Last step, the onions and the garlic. We have our, our tempeh on. Three minutes have passed past. We're gonna add these bad boys. They're already cooked. And just so you know, you can do this all of in one pan. I just did it in two pans just so it's faster. Do the tempeh, take it out, and do the onions, and do the cauliflower. Simple, simple, simple. I told ya. And add this. Oh boy might need two spoons and then look at this and this when you mix it just just like this this is just a meal you don't even have to make the salad but if you like something fresh 
Also, it depends how much are you eating. This is beauty. This is, look at that. And that's it. Just mix, turn it off. This is done. Okay, so now we're gonna season our salad. I have some fermented carrots, whatever is left. We're gonna use the liquid, lime juice. You can use lemon, you can use balsamic vinegar, white wine vinegar goes well. Any vinegar that you like. I like my salads to be a lot of acidity because they're gonna contrast the savoriness of this. You want a balance. That's what makes food delicious, having a balance in the food that you are making. So, a little bit of pepper, 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 pepper. That it needs to be savory, it is savory. And when it needs to be acid, it is acid. So there's a perfect balance in the salad. This is just so good. You know, you have crispiness everywhere. The temp is great. Some of it is a little bit darker. Some of it is a little bit softer, chewier. And the cauliflower, awesome, magnificent. Brussels sprouts also, they're not overcooked. So I love them like that. Just fresh, beautiful, lots of salad, lots of freshness just a little bit of fresh herbs. I happen to have some dill here. I had some cilantro as well, but I thought, you know what? Dill is gonna go better with this kind of like favor profile. You can definitely go with cilantro because of the other ingredients that we have, like cumin, the oregano. So it plays really well. Even parsley would go well. And so this is my lunch. This is actually mine and this is Ariana's. This is mine, all of this, and this is Ari's. So she eats a lot, actually. She actually gets more after I serve her sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. It's dinner time, so let's see. I already see that I have a can of tomatoes. And we saw before that we have some quinoa. So we're going to use this quinoa. We have eggplant, bell pepper, portobello mushrooms, onion, garlic. And we're going to do kind of like a two kind of thing with quinoa. Stir the mushrooms, take them out, then add the bell peppers, the onion, the garlic, and the eggplant, or the eggplant first with olive oil, so it starts like absorbing this and it gets like sear and a little bit of color. Then season all of that, then blend or just mash the canned tomatoes, put it in there and let it cook. I'm gonna see if I have a little bit of time or a bay leaf or something, then just throw everything in there and then that's it, season it and then put it over the quinoa. Actually, we're not gonna add the quinoa in there. We can, if you want, or you can, but maybe I just put a little bit of quinoa at the bottom and then that, oh, and tofu as a protein. So we're gonna choose some spices because I'm like, it needs a little bit of like something. So, and I love spices, always cook with the spices. So a little bit of turmeric goes well. I love like the kind of like the curry kind of thing, but I don't wanna use one of these mixtures because I know the flavor in my mind. So some paprika, uh, some cinnamon. I just bought this cinnamon, this Indonesian cinnamon. Oh my God, it's super good. And a little bit of ginger. And with the garlic and the onion, I think this makes a pretty good combination. Let's go. Let's start with our eggplant. So I'm gonna use this serrated knife because the skin of the eggplant is very tough. So I don't wanna get my other knife dull. So I'm just gonna cut this to make a base. Then this, boom. We don't need, it doesn't need to be perfect. I want like squares that are large. So I'm cutting it in three and then just the size of the squares. We're gonna cut all our eggplant like that. Remember, eggplant is gonna shrink. It shrinks a lot. So just keep in mind that always when you cook with it. We're gonna start searing it first. We'll take it out, sear our tofu, and then add all the vegetables because we want flavoring here and flavoring here, and then the rest can cook slowly together. Let's start, let's bring our pan, medium high. Eggplant absorbs a lot of olive oil. This is gonna be absorbed in no time. It's warm, we're gonna add it slowly, carefully. Always add it, I always like to add kind of like on the side and here it would never splash me, do you see? So I add it here and then I just push it. Just so everything gets there. I don't need to move it, but yes, I'm going to season it. Why? Because we're gonna season as we go. Just a little bit, two pinches. 
voila. In the meantime, let's go and cut all the other vegetables. Okay, so in four minutes, less than four minutes, we're gonna get all the chopping done while our eggplant is cooking. Mm -hmm. That's what we started at first. And that's why I cook like that. You know, I don't cook everything first, if not, it would take me forever. So we're gonna dice the tofu. Two, three, four, five. And then three, this side, one, just hold the knife then just flip it and then in one shot we're cutting the whole block just hold all the pieces of top two three four five so it's five each way look voila beautiful put it on the plate and look this is super easy this is organization 101 we don't need like to do a lot of crazy stuff so we're gonna do here two Remove the, the bottom of the onion and then flip. One, two, three, four. And then we have this. Voila, maybe for this amount, one more. One more piece of onion, I'll do it by eye. This is about like three quarters of a cup or a cup. Then we have our garlic and we're gonna slice it. Thinly, 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 thinly. At the end we flip so we don't cut ourselves. Again, thinly, 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 we flip. That's how I flip. And then pop, pop, pop. So there is always a base on our vegetables. And lastly, our last vegetable, we're gonna add some portobello. The same, four, five, six. Flip all of it. You see, I'm chopping everything like fast and it's like not really like science. That's it, we chop everything and our eggplant is not even done. Look. But now, we're getting this beautiful color. I don't want you to put just all the ingredients in there because, you know, you're wasting your time. You're getting beautiful color here, lots of flavor, and it's taking four minutes. If you hear someone saying, just put everything all at once in one pot, just instantly unfollow them. Why? Because it's not going to have any flavor. I mean, there are advantages of that unless you're looking for that. But if not, if you're looking for flavor and you really care about your vegetables, you bought like nice vegetables, just put them all on there. It's like, I don't know, I don't know what, what other example to say, but it's just not right. It's like a scene to waste all those beautiful vegetables and just be like, ah, yeah, just like put them there. Like, do you put all your clothes in just the, the washing machine? Ah, yeah, just put your dresses and your caps and your shoes and everything. No, right? Just doesn't make any sense. So don't do that with, with cooking. When you don't season stuff well, it just doesn't taste like anything. But if you add a little bit of salt now here, it's gonna absorb it because it's gonna be cooking, searing with the oil and everything. Then afterwards you are like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna add more because I added tomatoes and everything. So then all the juices from the sauce and get absorbed by the tofu and it just like, everything is kind of like mixed up. So we're just going to let it there, get a little bit of color. The mushrooms are also gonna get seared adding a little bit of salt, you already know why. And then when this is a little bit cooked, I'm gonna add the onions and the garlic because if I add it now, the garlic can get burned. If you want it, you can add the onions there and that's fine, but that's the way I do it. If you want it faster, just add the onions and the garlic here, but lower the flame. They might not get enough color, a lot of color, but they're gonna get cooked slowly. That can be another method. Just cook it slowly, everything together, all the onion, garlic, peppers, and mushrooms. All right, well, that's done. This is what I'm gonna use. What do I look in a canned tomato? So if you can see the ingredients, tomatoes, tomato juice, citric acid, and calcium chloride. This is used to preserve it. But it's basically tomatoes and tomato juice. We're gonna blend it. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna blend it and then add it. Boom. Three minutes has passed. We can see here a little bit of color in both of them. Sear. This is the perfect time to add our garlic, our onion. We're gonna mix in. 
and we're gonna let it season here. We can lower the flame now, make sure the onions are separated one from each other so they cook evenly. And then we're gonna cook this for two minutes, then add the spices, then add the tomatoes, and the other ingredients, and let them cook together, and that's it. We're gonna add tofu here, because we want all the spices to get integrated with everything. Also the eggplant, that was my timer. Oh, look at that beauty. Look at this beauty of mix. Even just like this, if you're like, Lalo, I don't like those spices that you choose. I'm gonna eat it like that. Good for you. Let's just do it by eye, depending how much you like. I like the smokiness and the flavor of the pepper. Turmeric, this is good for inflammation in the body. This cinnamon, so good. It's kind of like Mexican cinnamon. Cinnamon is strong, you know, in flavor, but also it's kind of like warm spice. So watch out with that. And ginger, as you know, it can be a little bit spicy. So this may be maybe just a quarter of a teaspoon. Now after the spices are here, the reason I'm adding them here is because all the oil is in these vegetables. So the oil is gonna absorb the flavor and it already smells so wonderful. I know you cannot smell, but if you could, you would fall in love right away. Let the heat and the oil get a little bit with the spices. You see the tofu? Everything, the eggplant is getting that off. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. This is so easy, you already saw how. Now we have our tomato. Just blend one kind of tomato as you saw, without anything else because everything else is in here. You can add more tomato and make it like more soupy, more stewy. Even add a little bit of vegetable stock if you want it. I won't recommend adding water now because, you know, the point of removing the water from the tofu and from the eggplant and everything is to concentrate the flavor. Add salt because we added tomato. Oop, mix it in, mix it in. We're gonna cover and cook it in slow from like five to eight minutes just to finish cooking the eggplant and finish cooking all together. All right, last step, we're gonna cook some kale, but I just wanna share a quick story with you about when I became vegan and you know what people ask me and probably give you a little bit of insight if you're new to this vegan journey. People always ask me like, hey, was it difficult to leave the meat? That was the most difficult thing. And yeah, I think it was difficult because I always ate meat and all my memories were with meat, you know, about like with foods around meat. And I think that's why it's also very difficult for a lot of people to stop eating animal products because sometimes it's not even the flavor because, I mean, it is good, you know, I got to say, it. eating meat, cheese, eggs. But at the end of the day, I think it's more about the memories that you have attached to those foods. So something I, I guess I'm doing now is just creating those new memories with this kind of food, you know? So at the end of the day, like I have to unlearn how to cook with a meat and then start learning how to cook with vegetables and like hopefully when i have a family and kids and i want to teach them this they're gonna grow with these memories and they're gonna be like oh, i remember my dad used to do this or we did eggplant and this is too and things like that and my mom even my mom my dad now i'm like you know what this is something you can do and i start telling them you know like just maybe just add a little bit more vegetable or a side of salad or eat the salad first. Even my uncles, some of my uncles are like, they have a lot of problems because of the way they eat. Uh, and also in Mexico, we eat, you know, sometimes uh, a little bit too much refined products and more now that the corn, you know, is, is genetically modified. Even they ask me like, hey, how can I improve my health? One of them did the cleanse, the 369 cleanse from Anthony Williams. And they're like, it's just when you cook, you make it look like so easy and so delicious. And I'm like, you can do it too. So I told my aunt and then she did it for my uncle and he was happy. And I was like, this is actually not that bad. So, you know, little by little, you start building that. And it, like everything, it takes time, but I think it's worth it. So let's just add the kale and then let's call it a day. Look at that. Oh boy. You see how it's even, it has a lot of liquid. You're like, oh, why? It 
it wasn't a lot of tomatoes, but we didn't put any water because, you know, everything has water. The tofu still has water, even though it's firm. And then now this last step, you can add as much kale as you want. So probably that's enough. I'm gonna wilt, but still, I think that's plenty. And look, what a beautiful dish, no? You have at least here four vegetables, greens, like the variety, right? And it was very simple. And you can add here cauliflower or a little bit of broccoli or add arugula at the end if that's what you like or some microgreens, herbs, fennel instead of the bell peppers and look, amazing. So this is done. Now we're just gonna add parsley, chopped parsley, a lot of it. Okay, let's taste this baby. It's hot, so be careful, it's really hot. Mm. And it's so good. You would think it would be like more spiced because of all the spices I add. But actually, no, it, the sauce is kind of like pretty balanced. It has flavor that it is missing one thing. That's spicy. The reason I don't add the spice is because someone else will need it if I add a spice, right? So I have another spice, but with some like, you know, like red chilies or like serranos in there when we added the spices. Chulada, but it's very good. So I just warm up the quinoa. As you know, it was cooked. It is just bland. It has uh, water. And I think I didn't cook this quinoa. I think Ari cooked it. So probably has a little bit of salt. So she doesn't really put a lot of salt on the food. But that's a good thing, but not for flavor, right? <laughs> so then we're just gonna add our mix of the stew. Try to get all the vegetables, like some eggplant, some peppers, some kale. Time to taste it together. I'm so excited for this. Like some quinoa, some of this. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. So simple. That's it, guys. That's my dinner. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you like it, please leave it in the comments. I wanna know if this was something interesting, this kind of like format, everything overall, what do you like, what you didn't like. And don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. See you next time. Thank you so much. God bless you.